All right, hey everyone, and welcome back to HIV RNA Test Guide Podcast. You know us, we're your go-to for reliable HIV info and resources. That's right. And lately our inboxes have been, well, blowing up yeah. with concerns about this measles outbreak going on in Texas. Absolutely. It's doubled in size, up to 48 cases now, and it's mainly concentrated in Gaines County. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing it pop up in surrounding counties too. Terry, Yoakum, and Lynn. Right. So for those of you living with HIV, this is uh, understandably causing some anxiety. It is. So today we're doing a deep dive into the facts, what this outbreak means for you, and most importantly, the steps you can take to protect yourselves. Definitely. Measles. It's one of those things we often think of as a childhood illness, something from the past. Right. But this outbreak is a stark reminder that it's still very much a threat. Absolutely. And it's a particularly serious threat for people with HIV. The Texas Department of State Health Services has been really hammering home the importance of vaccination. So I guess the big question is, why is vaccination, especially in this context, so crucial for someone living with HIV? Well, think of it this way. Your immune system, it's like an army, right? Okay, I like this analogy. And vaccines, they're like boot camp. They train your immune system, teach it how to fight off specific invaders like the measles virus. So you're prepping those immune system soldiers for battle, essentially. Well, exactly. Now, for someone with HIV, their immune system might be a little uh, weaker. So this training, this vaccination, it becomes even more vital. It helps them build up their defenses before they ever encounter the real enemy. So it's about giving their immune system that extra edge it might need. Yeah. It makes sense. Right. We're hearing a lot about the MMR vaccine. Can you break that down for us? What does MMR stand for? So MMR stands for measles, mumps, and rubella. Got it. Three for one. Three for one protection. It's generally very safe and effective. Okay, good to know. But I know there are always nuances, especially when we're talking about HIV. Absolutely. And here's the thing with the MMR vaccine and HIV. It's considered safe for folks with a CD4 count of 200 or greater. Now, before we go any further, I think it's important to pause here for a second. Definitely. Some of our listeners might not be totally familiar with CD4 counts. Right. Can you give us a quick rundown? Of course. So CD4 cells, they're these amazing white blood cells that are a crucial part of your immune system. Okay. They're like the generals, the leaders, directing the fight against infections. Right. And your CD4 count, it tells you how many of these generals you have on hand ready to rally the troops. The more the merrier, I assume. Exactly. The higher the CD4 count, the stronger your immune response. Okay, so back to the MMR vaccine. You mentioned a CD4 count of 200 being a sort of threshold. Why is that number significant? Okay, so the MMR vaccine, it's what we call a live vaccine. Live, what does that mean? It means it uses a weakened version of the measles virus to trigger that immune response, that boot camp we talked about. But it's still live, it's still active. Okay, I see where this is going. Right, so for someone with a CD4 count below 200, their immune system may not be robust enough to handle even this weakened virus. It could potentially pose a risk. So that 200 mark is a safety precaution. Exactly. So that's for folks who haven't been exposed to measles yet. But what about someone with a CD4 count below 200 who's already had contact with the virus? Are there options? Absolutely. It's not a hopeless situation. There's something called post-exposure prophylaxis, or PEP for short. PEP, what's that all about? Well, it involves getting an injection of immunoglobulin, which is basically concentrated antibodies against measles. It's like giving your immune system an immediate boost, a shot of pre-made defenses. It's like a rapid response team for your immune system. You got it. And timing is key here. PEP is most effective when it's given within 72 hours of exposure. Ideally, the sooner the better. It can neither prevent the infection altogether or at least lessen the severity. That 72 hour window is critical. Now, what if someone with a CD4 count of 200 or greater is exposed? What are their options? In that case, they've actually got two lines of defense. They can get the MMR vaccine as part of PEP, giving them long-term protection. And they also get the immediate boost from the immunoglobulin, double whammy. So bottom line, for anyone listening who's living with HIV, especially with this outbreak happening, know your CD4 count and talk to your doctor about the MMR vaccine. Yes. And if you've been exposed to measles, don't wait. Seek medical attention right away. That 72-hour window for PP can be a game changer. Absolutely. You know that in 2019, the U.S. actually saw its highest number of measles cases in a quarter century. 
That's right, the CDC reported over 700 cases across 22 states. What makes that 2019 outbreak so significant is that it really underscored how quickly measles can spread, even in places where vaccination rates are generally high. Wow, that's a stark reminder, isn't it? But before we get into specifics for those of us living with HIV, could you break down why measles is so dangerous in general? Absolutely. Measles is a highly contagious viral disease, and while some people might experience mild symptoms for others, it can be very serious. Even life-threatening, the virus spreads through the air. So if someone with measles coughs or sneezes, it can easily infect others. And here's the thing, there's no specific treatment for measles. Once you're infected, the only real protection is prevention through vaccination. That really emphasizes why vaccination is so crucial, especially when you consider how HIV can affect the immune system. <sighs> so let's dive into what this blog post from HIV.gov recommends. What stands out to you as the key takeaways? Well, the first thing that jumps out is the strong recommendation for the MMR vaccine. That's measles, mumps, and rubella all in one shot. If you were born after 1956 and haven't had the vaccine, or if you're not sure about your immunity, the blog post urges you to talk to your doctor. Makes sense. But what about people with HIV who might have concerns about whether the MMR vaccine is safe for them? It's a valid question, and thankfully the blog post addresses that. Directly, it states that the MMR vaccine is generally safe for people with HIV who have a CD4 count of 200 or greater. Okay, so that's reassuring for many, but I'm guessing things are different for those with a CD4 count below 200. You're right, for those with a CD4 count below 200, the MMR vaccine isn't recommended. This is because it's a live vaccine, meaning it contains a weakened form of the virus. While this weakened form is safe for most people, it can potentially pose a risk for those with significantly compromised immune systems. That makes sense. So knowing your CD4 count is crucial and having that open conversation with your doctor about vaccination is key. But what if you've already been exposed to measles? What happens then? Is there anything that can be done? The blog post mentioned something called post-exposure prophylaxis, or PE, which can be an option in certain cases for people with HIV, and a CD4 count below 200 PEP using immunoglobulin might be recommended, and for those with a CD4 count of 200 or greater PEP could involve receiving the MMR vaccine if they haven't already. So PEP is kind of like an emergency measure to potentially reduce the risk or severity of infection after you've been exposed to measles. Exactly, and it's most effective when administered within 72 hours of exposure. Think of it as a race against time to boost the body's defenses. It really is, and it highlights why staying informed about potential exposures is so important. You know, knowing the signs of measles and taking precautions like good hand hygiene can make a real difference. You've brought up some great points about protecting ourselves. But I'm also curious about the bigger picture. We often hear about herd immunity, but how does that actually play into this, especially when we're talking about those of us with HIV? That's a crucial point. Herd immunity happens when a significant portion of a population is immune to a disease, making it much harder for that disease to spread this protection is especially important for individuals who can't be vaccinated, for example, those with severe immune deficiencies. So when vaccination rates drop, it not only puts those individuals at risk, but it also makes outbreaks like the one in 2019 more likely. So even if someone with HIV can't get the MMR vaccine themselves because of their CD4 count, having high vaccination rates in the community can offer them a degree of protection. Exactly. It's like a safety net for those who are most vulnerable. That really underscores the responsibility we all have to protect each other. Speaking of responsibility, earlier you mentioned that knowing your CD4 count is crucial for making decisions about the MMR vaccine. Could you elaborate on why CD4 count is so important in the context of HIV and vaccination? Absolutely. CD4 cells are a type of white blood cell that play a vital role in the immune system. HIV attacks these cells, weakening the body's ability to fight off infections. The CD4 count is a measure of how well your immune system is functioning. So a lower CD4 count generally means a weaker immune response, making someone more susceptible to infections and potentially increasing the risks associated with live vaccines like the MMR vaccine. That's really helpful to understand. It makes sense why the blog post stresses the importance of knowing your CD4 count and discussing vaccination with your doctor. Yeah. Now, before we move on, you mentioned other vaccinations that are important for those of us with HIV. Could you expand on that a bit? Of course, besides the MMR vaccine, there are other routine vaccinations that are generally recommended for people with HIV, such as the flu shot, pneumococcal vaccines, and the hepatitis B vaccine. 
The specific recommendations might vary depending on individual factors like your CD4 count, your overall health, and your risk factors. So it sounds like there's no one-size-fits-all approach. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. It's about having that individualized conversation with your doctor to determine the best vaccination plan for you. They can consider your unique circumstances and advise you on the most appropriate vaccines and the timing of those vaccinations. This has been such an informative discussion, and I'm sure our listeners are finding it helpful. But before we wrap up, I want to circle back to something you touched upon earlier, the 2019 measles outbreak. Yeah. You mentioned how quickly measles can spread even in places with relatively high vaccination rates. What does that mean for those of us with HIV, especially if we're traveling? That's a great question, and it brings up an important point about travel safety for people with HIV. If measles can spread so rapidly, even in areas with decent vaccination rates, it means that those with weakened immune systems need to be extra cautious, especially when traveling to places where vaccination coverage is lower or where outbreaks are occurring. So in addition to being up to date on routine vaccinations, are there any specific precautions we should be taking when we travel? It's always a good idea to consult with your doctor before traveling, especially if you have HIV. They can provide personalized advice based on your destination and any potential health risks. Mm. They might recommend additional booster shots or even preventive medications depending on where you're going and the prevalence of measles in that area. It's like having a customized travel health plan to minimize risks. Exactly. And beyond vaccinations, good hygiene practices like frequent hand washing and avoiding close contact with people who are sick can also go a long way in protecting yourself, especially when you're in unfamiliar environments. This has been an incredibly insightful discussion. I think one of the key takeaways here is that staying informed and being proactive about our health is so important. I completely agree. Knowledge is power, and that's especially true when it comes to navigating life with HIV. And for those looking to delve deeper into this topic, you can find a wealth of information on HIV.gov, including details about the MMR vaccine PEP and other vaccinations that might be relevant to you. It's a fantastic resource, and it's constantly updated with the latest guidelines and recommendations, so you can be sure you're getting accurate information. Before we say goodbye, I wanted to leave our listeners with something to ponder. We've talked a lot about the importance of vaccination, but it made me wonder, how does access to health care play into all of this? You know, ensuring everyone has equitable access to these preventative measures, especially those of us living with HIV. That's a really insightful question and one that deserves a whole deep dive on its own access to quality health care, including vaccinations, is fundamental to public health. But unfortunately, not everyone has equal access. This disparity can be particularly challenging for marginalized communities and those living with HIV who might already face systemic barriers to care. It's something we as a society need to address more proactively. Absolutely. It's a reminder that staying healthy with HIV isn't just about individual choices. It's about advocating for a healthcare system that supports everyone's well-being. Well said. And on that note, a huge thank you to all our listeners for tuning in to the HIV RNA Test Guide podcast. We're committed to providing you with the information and support you need to thrive. And remember, you can find more resources and connect with us on our website and social media. Until next time, stay informed, stay empowered, and stay well.